Yeah, we are setting up the, the shot for Philip Haldeman's talking head. Um, he's going to be, he's in a shack somewhere, pulled up in like Montana, he's like the Unabomber basically. Um, so because his life just went to shit after he was in the room essentially, like, everyone says, what happened to you? And you know, his life went to shit. So we're just trying to make something look like a Unabomber, where a Unabomber would live. Okay, um, so this is your real garage. So this you is made my, it look like a Unabomber yes, lived here. I made it look like a Unabomber. I mean, I'm not a Unabomber. I'm a multi-bomb person. Um, so yeah, I... Uh, a lot of set dressing involved. A lot of set dressing. This took a lot of time if you want to take a look. It's just a, a ton of, of time to like set this up. I mean, it, yeah, lots of effort. We had some scenic painters come in. Like this, this dust, I had to go find this dust because my house has no dust in it. It's completely spotless. So to find the dust to put here was like, it took a lot of time and effort. So I'm glad people are going to appreciate this set. It's hand shaven dust. It is. It is. And we also had a set over there, the hoarder set. <laughs> Again, not my natural garage. How did you come to be part of the room actors? Where are they now? Well, uh, A, I'm a fan. Uh, and B, uh, Hunter, who um, is producing this, um, called and said, we would love to have you come in and be a part of this. I've worked with her before. So um, it was kind of fun. I, I love the idea of it. Yeah. Um, so tell me, what's your opinion of this movie, The Room? Okay. It's a little crazy, right? Yeah. Look at my eyes. <laughs> it is crazy. It is insane. It is horrible. And yet you, it's like a train wreck. You cannot keep your eyes off of it. I do want to go back home now and rewatch it because now I've been with some of the people and heard some of the stories right. behind Later. it. So it's, I think it'll be more fascinating. Later. And then I have Ham. So he's like giving me all the secrets. <laughs> secrets that nobody knows. No talking. Okay. Hey, John. Yes, ma'am. So I hear it's hard work being a stand in. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. It's uh, excruciatingly hard. So what have you done to prepare to be a stand-in on this Well, project? I sit a lot, you know, <laughs> I practice sitting, you know, yeah. I think about sitting all the time. All right. Yeah. So this is kind of serendipitous for you because I heard that you show this movie, The Room, to your students. So what's it like to actually be a part of another project involving The Room actors? Oh, it's fantastic because I'm like a true super fan and, you know, I do, I use it in class like this is what not to do, and it's actually the best teaching tool I've ever found. Um, once they see that, uh, and I s point out something that's in their script that they see on the screen, they're like, they never do it again. So, so tell me, great. like, an example of that. Oh, like, uh, entrances and exits. Oh, hi. Oh, bye. Oh, hi. Oh, bye. Oh, hi, Michelle. Oh, hi, Mark. Actually, I enjoyed making the room. I thought I, it didn't always make sense to me. But I really enjoyed the opportunity to make a full-length <laughs> film, and uh, as quirky as he was, I always liked Tommy, and he was always nice to me. I think it's probably because I was the oldest member of the, of the cast and the crew, and he sort of treated me like the queen mother, you know. And uh, but he was always very nice. He would ask my opinion. He never took it, but he would always ask, and "What do you think of this? What do you think of that?" It was a good experience. It was quirky and it was strange and it was uneven, but I, I'm really glad I did it and I'm glad I took part in it. And uh, all of this is just wonderful, getting back together again with everybody and having the opportunity to re reunite with other room people. And Because it was a unique experience for all of us. And it's interesting to get back and compare notes. And it was a positive experience for me. So how did you get involved with this project? So I'd heard about the uh, Kickstarter campaign. Um, I forgot exactly who I heard about it through, but I remember uh, hearing about it and then I went online and went to the Kickstarter profile, watched the little five minute video that um, Robin made. And uh, you know, I was just sat there. I thought this would be a great project. It looks like a lot of fun. Just finished reading uh, The Disaster Artist and I thought to myself, you know what? You know, considering my love for this movie and you know, it looks like a fun, a fun project to work on, I want it. So what kind of directorial advice do you have for him in this scene? Oh, he's doing great. I mean, he's already doing great. Like, I, obviously, he's a very experienced, hilarious actor. So, sometimes the pressure is on when you only have one or two lines. You gotta try too much with it. So I'm gonna really not try anything. No, <laughs> but no. As a guest star actor, a lot of. Have you ever had this 
the shorter the lines, the harder it is to it memorize, is, yeah. the more pressure you put on yourself because you're saying something weird out of context, you know, but it's easier to memorize lines of, hey, how you doing? Oh, with nice breeze. Oh, that's my car. But when you're going, hey, carbs, that, that you know, yeah. Yeah. So I had that on Friends where Lisa Kudrow, I'm name dropping, um, <laughs> she said, I've had that too, where she used to be on Mad About You and say that was the hardest. She used to just come in as a waitress, say something weird and leave. Right. So, and if it's not funny in that one yeah, that 10 so second moment, then you're like, oh, if this, if sure. I'm not funny in my one thing, then I'm, <laughs> I'm gonna just stalk you and go please and bang on the door one more shot. <laughs> this is our last setup of the day. We're uh, about to wrap day two. We're moving into day three tomorrow. Really excited. We've got Richard Tyson on set tomorrow. He was in Kindergarten Cop. He was, he was Buddy Ravel in Three O'Clock High. He was also in an extremely steamy movie called Two Noon Junction that I saw when I was 14. First. Exciting. <laughs> so, excited to meet him. Anyway, it's and John is embarrassed because he's her uncle. And so every time we talk about him, she gets really embarrassed. Anyway, um, not that he's, I mean, because, you know, I understand. <laughs> he's hot. She's embarrassed.